One of the most common questions I'm asked about the modular papercraft terrain system that we've got in the paper realms is exactly how do you get going with it? So I want to do a quick walkthrough of the basics of a core set. What are the things that you'll be making and how they go together so you can kind of see what the final product will be. And the fundamental building block on which everything else is based will be the tile. And I've got a number of different tiles here. They come in three inch increments. So we have a three by three, a three by six inch tile, and a six by six inch tile. And we'll talk a little bit more later about these tabs that go in the corners and how important they are. But I want to dig in a little bit on the tiles before we get to that, just so you know how they're made, what they look like. So they are based off of foam core that have slots cut into the sides. And those slots are important. They're going to allow us to connect multiple tiles together to form a sturdy base on which we build out some terrain. So I can take multiple tiles and use foam core biscuits, little plugs that are going to slip into the tile. And by connecting a couple of these together, I can do this upside down so it's easier for me to see where they're going. There we can connect those and it creates a nice kind of bump resistant uh, connected set of tiles. And using different size tiles, we can go and attach hallway tiles uh, or smaller tiles together and build more interesting dungeons, uh, buildings, and whatnot. Now, the way a tile is made, we start with a blank piece of foam core. Uh, what you have here is a foam core uh, piece that has a tile template applied to it. I just use some spray glue to mount that directly to the foam core and then I've cut around the edges and this will give me those notches. This will then get wrapped in a texture and we apply those tabs uh, to finish up the tile. So in your collection you're going to have a whole bunch of tiles made uh, and they will be available for you so you can go and you know assemble a floor plan however you may need whether it's going to be large rooms, small rooms, maybe a giant area with walls uh, to delineate rooms. All right, so from there, I'm going to go and set up, I guess, a little floor plan. Uh, maybe I'm going to make a large room. And off to the side, we'll go and add kind of a curved hallway. Maybe there will be some stairs that come down here to lead into this room where we'll have an encounter. So I'm going to go and connect these tiles together. And that's an optional step. You really don't need to if you're just going to have a single floor, a small encounter. Um, once you get your walls in place, it'll hold together pretty nicely. But for completeness here, I'm going to go and connect my tiles together using my biscuits. And we'll see that the process for doing that is pretty straightforward. Don't have to flip this upside down each time. I can go and come at it at a slight angle. If you're doing very large rooms, then I would recommend connecting a whole row of tiles together and then do each row after that. So that way you do the horizontal tabs and then you do the vertical. All right, so there we have those connected together, nice and easy. So the second piece to the puzzle here are going to be the posts. Posts are supports for the walls and to make sure that they don't just fall off or get bumped off of your terrain while you're in a game, uh, they connect using these tabs. So posts come in three basic styles. We have what we call corner posts. Corner posts, I expand this out, will have two slots to attach a wall. So that way you can have one coming out on this side and one coming out this side away from the corner. You then have all side posts. And side posts, like the name implies, will go along the side edge of a tile. And that way you can connect walls in one, two, or three directions. 
And lastly, we have center posts. And the center posts can go right in the intersection of two walls or the three corners, four corners even, um, so that you can have walls coming out in one, two, three, four directions. So generally we have quite a few corner posts in action, fewer of the side posts and very few center posts. To get these attached to the tiles, I just lift up the tabs and slide those posts right in place. And I'm just gonna go around the corners of this build that we're making here and just get the posts in place really quickly. I usually start by hitting the corners because the corners are, they are what they are. You have to put a corner post there. Now side posts, sometimes you can get away with two corner posts if that's what you need. Or sometimes like here where you have just three corners, I'm gonna use a center post for those. So we can get all of these tabs in place. Get them all tucked inside. It's just paper, so you can come up with some creative solutions. For example, sometimes instead of using a center post for these three corner intersections, I will take a side post like this one here and glue a corner post to it. So that gives me a nice three-way connection there. The walls, just like the tiles, they come in three inch and six inch increments. Many core sets will also provide slightly smaller dimensions, uh, one inch and two inch walls so that you can make some smaller uh, pieces to your scene. Here, I'm gonna go and add a side post, just so I can add a couple more three inch walls. But already we have uh, an even more stable build because these posts help clamp the tiles together. And as we add more and more pieces, this becomes more and more sturdy. All right, let's get some walls in place. Walls are super easy to build and they're nice and flat, so they store very compactly. Here with the infinite dungeon set, we have Lots of walls that are just blank. We can add some alcoves to them. Uh, we have some that feature, let's see, some torches. We have doors and archways. You can even cut out the doors so you have open archways. And there are lots of add-ons to these modular terrain sets so that once you've got lots of tiles and posts built, to get more out of that, you simply need to you know, pick up a new set of walls. Like here's an example of uh, some cages and walls with grates and other features. So we have a number of uh, add-ons that just add details. So if you want to have a slightly different dungeon area, you don't have to go and build a whole new set to do that. You can just add a couple of walls and it only takes a few minutes. So let me go and start by adding a number of six inch walls to this little build. Um, let me see here, we have some alcoves with torches. Maybe that will be nice to line this large room with. And the walls, as you see, they just slide right into the posts, hanging almost like a file folder in a file cabinet. And we'll put these three alcoves on opposite ends. And we'll throw this one with torches right over here. All right, so now we need to start thinking about the three inch walls. And so again, we have a number of variants of those three inch walls. And so I will start filling in this build. A great feature of using these flat walls, you'll notice that they go right up against the edge of the tiles. So what you build is the environment that you're going to be playing in. I have some archway here, so maybe I'll throw that in between these posts. Maybe to get into this large room, we'll use that's what we'll use the, uh, the cage door here for. And I have this 
extra alcove for our large room. And there we go. We have uh, a very quick dungeon build. And because this is locked together, it's very bump proof. You know, I can move this around quite easily. If you're going to be picking these things up, I would recommend finding kind of where it's going to be at its weakest point. And look at that, we can just lift that right off the table and maybe sit it to the side. And you can have a couple of encounter areas put together. And then when it's ready to play, you can go and bring them on piece by piece. You don't have to lock every tile together. So if I wanted to add on in this direction, maybe I have that sitting off to the side under some piece of construction paper or something so that nobody actually sees what's coming. And then I can just plunk that down and they have more terrain to explore. All right, and then we can go and get some additional pieces that we have to work with, things like stairs. We have stairs going up and we have tokens for stairs going down. So maybe once they get into this room, there's going to be some stairs heading down and maybe this is where they came in. All right, we can use 3D props. We can fill in the corners with crates and barrels and whatever, and then get your minis and you can start playing around. And once you get into this and you get lots of stuff built, you can really start to have fun with larger terrain build outs. Or again, you can just sit this on a battle mat and maybe only do the marquee encounters with this type of 3D terrain. But if I grab some more tiles, you can see these will also stack nicely on top. So we could build a second level and you know, use these stairs to go up instead of just sprawling flat. And so you can build uh, multi-story buildings, multi-story dungeons, that sort of a thing very easily. And then each layer can be taken off. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the different terrain pieces are, how they're used, what it is that you'll be building. So Infinite Dungeons is a great set to start with, or one of our dungeon sets. For example, the Hibernaculum is another great dungeon, the Temples of Terror. That'll give you some idea of how to take advantage of the real basic pieces in these core sets. And then from there, you can go and get some of the buildings where you can build roof systems and whatnot. All right, so give it a go. Feel free to reach out and let us know at Paper Realms how things are going for you. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to help. Until then, I hope you have a great gaming session.